Hey y'all, I'm Courtney. And I'm Sarah. And this is Bada Siblings. The podcast where we read all the books we used to steal off our grandmother's nightstands. And then we drink about it. On this episode, we're reading Susan Elizabeth Phillips's Lady Be Good. Trigger warnings for this book include a benign roofing. Now, someone is roofied, but they're roofied for their own good. So take with that what you will. We also have a woman who starts off infertile, but a giant dick cures her of that. <laughs> Basically, his dick turns her womb off and turns it back on again. Um, we have an evil duke. Uh, yeah, we have like a, a kind of a nasty, honestly, uh, blackmail marriage situation, but it's done because like she's like the last uh, plausible virgin in England. So it's like a princess die business. And it's that that one is actually like relatively upsetting because it's somebody who she continues to say no to. And he's like, just like riots completely rough shot over her objections. Right. We also have our hero who, you know, we we trust. We found out that he has been doing a little bit of like spying. Actually, a like lot that. of spying. A lot of spying. That was a big trust break, honestly. Yeah. It should have gotten actually more attention in this book than it did. Yes. Um, and yeah, there's also, um, there's a guy who married his daughter's sorority uh, sister as a second wife. Yeah. So our hero's stepmom is younger than him. And right. that's weird and gross. Yeah. Although um, they seem happy. The thing about it is if you've listened to our first Susan Elizabeth Phillips episode, you know that her books and her characters in a very Julie Garwood way, are dialed up to 12. So the things in it that if you put it in any other book situation would be upsetting. These are just like what other continuous... She is able to encapsulate things in nonsense that it kind of works. Yeah, it does. Um. So, yeah. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Happy fall, everyone. Um. We are here to talk about... I feel like all of our sport books don't really ever go with the... Sp- the typical sport book <laughs> theme. Like, I think we had one, we had an ex football player once, but usually, we like, we've done this is our second Susan Elizabeth Phillips book, and it's our second golf book. So we're dealing with the sexiest sport again. Oh, yes. Of golf. And in fact, there is like the main character does look at him practicing golf, and he has changed from his t shirt to a polo shirt and um and into golf shoes, and that's the only difference. And he's, yeah. like, he's like, Well, god damn, he is good looking. Like, this works for I me. I don't know who's hot for, I don't know, but like, that's that's who she is. Yes. So now, unlike I had to say, our last uh, sports book, which I hated with every fiber of my being, that Nora Roberts abortion book. In that one, they were both athletes. Yeah, and I do much prefer that than other people watching other people play sports. But yeah. so this is a, where he's a, he's a golf player, right? He's a golf player, but he's a golf player that's been suspended. Mm. Um, so you need to do the cover. Yes. So the cover is really kind of up, like it's benign. It's, it's just, disappointing. It's got her name. It's got the name of the book, which is again, Lady Be Good. There's a little, there's a step back, but you open it and it's not a whole page step back. It's just like a cheater step back. It looks like a little country, like an English country cottage, I guess. It sucks. Yeah. It's very, it. very boring. I hate it. Um, so again, go back and listen to our Fancy Pants. Fancy Pants episode to learn more about Susan Elizabeth Phillips. Um, I personally really enjoy her. She's a, She can write nonsense, but she also writes kind of really well done man emotion. Yeah. yeah. Well, honestly, she does a really good job of starting off with people who are made like different degrees of unpleasant. And then like by the end of the book, they have grown as people, but they haven't actually lost they haven't yeah. been neutered or whatever. Right. Like, they're still exactly the same people as they were before. It's just that you understand them better now and, yes. like, you know, what's coming on behind, under the hood. Yes. So, I will let you read the back cover. Sorry, I had to figure out where the actual copy starts because... There's a lot of... There's a lot of fluff before that. If you haven't read Susan Elizabeth Phillips, you haven't read Romance from the Oakland Press. I just don't feel that that's factually true. It's very aggressive. Yeah, no kidding. Like, calm down, Oakland Press. Um, a British lady, Lady Emma Wells Finch, the oh so proper headmistress of England's St. Gertrude School for Girls. Do you have to say it's England's? Couldn't you just assume that Lady <laughs> Emma Wells Finch at St. Gertrude's Girl School for Girls Maybe, is in yeah. England? Is a woman on a mission. She has two weeks to lose her reputation. Arriving in Texas with skirts flying, umbrella pointing, and beautiful mouth issuing orders. She knows only one thing will save her from losing everything she holds dear. Complete and utter disgrace. A Texas rascal. World famous playboy athlete Kenny Traveler has kicked up his boot heels one too many times and now he's suspended from the sport he loves. 
Only one thing will restore his career, complete and utter respectability. Unfortunately, he's been blackmailed into chauffeuring bossy, single-minded Lady Emma, and she's hell-bent on visiting honky-tonks, chasing down tattoo parlors, and worse. Lots worse. Love all American style. When a gorgeous man who can't afford another scandal meets a hard-headed woman who's determined to cause one, anything can happen. But love? Oh dear, that's impossible. That's outrageous. That's inevitable. <laughs> Actually, that wasn't bad jacket copy. I mean, some of it was weird about her, like, beautiful mouth. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but I guess like, that's what they keep talking about, is her, her damn mouth. Yeah. I mean, like, I can't imagine. Well, you know, I can never imagine the people that they have in these books. Yeah. Like, I don't understand what flashing eyes really look like. Yeah. I don't understand these mouths that they always have. I do imagine that every hero in, uh, like, a Susan Elizabeth Phillips book looks like early Matthew McConaughey. Like, they're all gold <laughs> yeah, and yeah, rangy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's the thing that I can pick up. Yeah. So the book starts out with... Um, I actually see all the women as looking like like Jennifer Connelly. Yeah, I yeah. can see that. You know? Like, yeah. So the book starts off with, you know... He- oh, wait, what year is it? Oh, yeah. That's important. Yeah, we're like... No, that's very important because, like... Uh, it's later I than say, I thought it was. I yeah, think. it is later than I thought it was because Tori, the sister, looks like a perfect, like, aerobics girl, you yeah. know? But um, this is 1999, motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. This is when I was in college. Yeah. It feels much earlier than Yes. That. This feels like an 80s book. Yeah. 100%. So the book starts off with Kenny, who has... Same universe, same universe alert. The book starts off with Kenny, who is on the PGA Tour. Well, not anymore. (laughs) Well, he has been banned by Dally. Hey, remember Dally, who kidnapped his own son and fed him ketchup, even though he said he was allergic? Remember that, Dally? Remember Dally, who he and Francesca both uh, fought, like, as in, like, kicking and slapping, and then fucked in the same roadhouse parking lot? Yeah. Well, now he's the acting PGA commissioner and telling other people how to behave in public. I know. So, Dally has kicked Kitty off the PGA Tour for, like, we don't even really, like, Kitty. At the time, we don't know. We find out that what happened, and this is, like, always what's happening to Kenny. Kenny's the unluckiest motherfucker alive. He really is. He was, he hit a dude for, for hitting, wait, I'm sorry, I'm getting the two, uh, like, uh, incidents confused. He gets kicked off because of the bad press. He hit the guy. He hit the guy, but then, like, the guy's shitty, like, his ex-girlfriend, who is the guy's girlfriend now, tried to break it up, and so all the TV cameras caught was him punching a lady in the face. Yes. So that is unfortunate. So he did get... John Daly's done worse than that, though, right? I mean, right? (laughs) Clearly. So he is cool in his heels. Well, Dally and... Francesca, spoiler alert, are still very happily married, even though it's been 20 years. Well, the funny thing is that, like, um, the golf in the original one, Fancy Pants, was both real and fake. And so they, they were always playing, like, the shmoo as shmorpin. Yeah. But yet he was playing Jack Nicholas. Well, in this time, Tiger Woods is in this universe, but you never meet him. No. Like, uh, Kenny is just mad that he's not playing against Tiger in the yeah, Masters. Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah. So he's cool in his heels. And Francesca has made friends with this younger lady named Emma. Who? Lady Emma. Lady Emma. But she doesn't go by that. I mean, she's not like that, you know, yeah. but she doesn't go she by She is the headmistress at this, like, run-down, kind of dilapidated little girl's private school in England called St. Gert's. St. Gertrude's, but everybody calls it St. Gert's. And that's where she grew up. Like, her parents were... She lived that kind of, like, all the books I read when I was a kid had parents like that, where the parents were archaeologists and would die out in, like... Yeah. Egypt or Afghanistan or like some somewhere where like they would leave their kids with an uncle or whatever and then go do awesome shit without them. Like I read a the ton dream. of yeah, basically. The I dream. know, I know. I read a ton of <laughs> oh, books like that. Like, like, like why was that a it. staple of books? Like, why? <laughs> well, where are these parents? I want to be this parent doing yeah. awesome shit. Yeah, like, like her mom gets flattened by a statue falling on her in Afghanistan. Yeah, that's perfect. That's Let amazing. that happen to me. You lo- you die doing the thing you love, <laughs> and you don't see it even coming. You, you don't have like, to drive somebody somewhere. Oh my god! You don't have to that. You don't have to hear about you know school politicking. The dream. Mm. Let me get. Let me get. You know whose lunch you have statue. to worry about when you get crushed by a statue in Afghanistan? Just yours. <laughs> Just your fucking lunch. That's amazing. And you amazing. know what? If you don't want to eat lunch, if you're just busy or you don't care or whatever, you just you know, don't have to eat you lunch. You know what happens if you're, you know what doesn't happen if you're navigating the Congo uh-huh. is that your daughter's softball 
coach says, hey, we know it'll be fun is let's get white pants this season. Oh, fuck. My kid had white pants when he was in Little League. Yes. So, I mean, God, uh, that's what I want. I want to be just like, shit, yeah. get off and just go yeah. do awesome shit. Yeah. I wanna... I, if the piranhas eat me, the piranhas Fine. eat me. But fuck, I don't have to wash white fucking pants every goddamn day. Exactly. Dreams. Anyway, Emma is has come to Texas and Kenny has been instructed to be her tour guide. So she's really there to do historical research and they understand vaguely what you do to do historical research, but not the actual things that you're just for or whatever. It's just yeah. weird. Like, so she does go to like libraries and archives and stuff, but then like mainly she's there to like party down because she has been put in a bind by this old decrepit duke. I don't think he's really old, but I'm calling him old. Well, everybody says that he has a strong resemblance in so many ways to Henry VIII, and not just the fact that he has two previous dead wives who's only left yeah. daughters. Like, uh, yeah, wow. Uh, they don't but, go to St. Gertz because they're better than that. <laughs> well, he's also like the you know, the board of trustees person for St. Yeah, Gertz. Uh, like, so, no, he's actually the owner. Yeah, so it's like pretty much like, hey, died. hey, you're going to marry me or I'm going to shut this place down. Yes. So we have this kind of blackmail but happening. He's gone through all the plausible virgins of Britain. And the reason he's after her, even though she's a grown ass woman, these people are in their 30s. Yeah, I do it. Yeah. But it's just, and, and oh, I like this about this character is that she agrees she is a virgin it's not because she's saving herself for marriage or she's ugly or she thinks she's ugly whatever she's just busy okay she's busy she's i get that uh, but yeah so like um you know she all the men have always been intimidated by her because she's real smart which i understand that motherfucker um and then like now she lives in this small town where it's a dumb bitch i don't <laughs> that is not true ah. you gotta tell me you don't intimidate men you're gonna look me in the eye and say you do well, not, not because I'm date smart. <laughs> <laughs> it's because the tire iron you keep in your hand. Exactly. Because <laughs> I'm mouthy. No. Oh. Yeah. So she is. She is coming to like. Yeah. Do a little bit. Like she's there. You know what? She's. She is like the librarian going to a conference in Las Woo. Vegas in that she is there to do 10% of fun, like work and then she is oh. going to go balls out fun. I have been to a library conference in New Orleans. So, <laughs> yeah, pretty much the same thing. <laughs> well, and I mean, the thing is that I like, again, I keep telling my things I like about this book that she, it's not that she has not had the guts. Some of these bo- books would be like, okay, well, she just doesn't know how to say no to him. She keeps saying no to him. So she's decided that the only way to get out of this is to have him decide that he doesn't want to marry her. Right. So, and, you know, because she can't convince him. And if she tries to convince him too hard, then he's just going to close down the school. And there's all these scholarship students and stuff, whatever. So what she decides is that she just makes herself just a little bit disreputable. Like, she doesn't want him to know this is a plan because then he'll close down the school. Right. She just doesn't, like, wants to get him just not want to be associated with her. So, like, her plan is that she's going to go to America and she's going to be seen just, uh, Cutting up. Get a tattoo. Going to honky tonks. Making out with dudes. You mean a, a duke wouldn't want to marry me? I know. You know, like, I mean, basically she's spring breaking is what she's yeah. doing. She's spring breaking. Yeah. And so we open with Kenny, who has been instructed by Dally, who has been instructed by Francesca <laughs> to pick up Lady M, as they call her. And, you know, he meets her. She's got on a big hat with cherries on it. She's got two kids in tow that have been acting up on an airplane, you know, and he's like, oh, Jesus, what's going on? And she's just bossing him around. <laughs> like, she's like, my luggage is over here. And he's like, well, that's great. Well, OK, I didn't think it was that bossy because, like, he's supposed to be driving her place. I know, but I mean, she does have very big Sarah energy. So, like, if you're not used to it, that is a little <laughs> bossy. So he he plays real slow and dumb and he's an ambler. He's he, the worst. Oh, my God. I he, wanted to slap his ass the whole time. He ambles. So she is getting driven. They're not her kids. She was, like, doing out a favor for a lady she met on the plane. Yeah. Like, he, they are driving each other crazy from the jump. So he drives her to his man con oh my god i forgot that he lied about who he was well, he yeah. didn't lie he just let her assume that like whatever and he was such an asshole and this was asshole behavior that he like acted like he was confused by the idea that he was supposed to escort her like and then oh, he thought he yeah he pretended yeah. he was a male escort and, and it was, then like took him to a house 
like a, a, well, a condo and says it's my friend's condo. And of course she thinks that he's mooching off a friend or whatever. When it's of course it's his fucking condo. Yeah. And he's got he's got a sex hot tub, you know, mm-hmm. of course. There's always a sex hot tub. Oh, I would not get in of... that thing for love nor God no, money. No. Um and you know, it comes out like eventually that who he, he is. And she... Well, no, it comes out eventually. But first she says, Okay, well, what'll fifty dollars I mean, she's gonna What's fifty dollars gonna get me? She is actually going and I mean, God bless her, because she's scared to fucking death. She's in this hot tub with this man. It's a little improbable she'd ever get in this hot tub with this man, but she, she's in this hot tub with this man, and he kind of dares her to take her suit off, and she does, and it's uh, such a murky hot tub, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Yeah, but so, and then, dirty. like, she's he is like, not, he has not checked the pH of that hot woo. tub. Now they've all got some kind of, like, awful yeast thing going mm. on. And and then she's like, fine, fine, I'm going to pay you $50, what will that get me? And, and he plays along with it. Yeah. And she is terrified but ready to like go down yeah. until she sees in the master bedroom a golf magazine on the nightstand <laughs> with his him as picture on it and she's like you absolute fucking asshole you have made a fool of me and she's right he but she been. also is real clever and is like you know what she turned because at first he was like well it's gonna be this much a day da, da, da. she's like well no now i'm gonna charge you that you're like you're gonna do all this or i'm gonna tell dally because mm-hmm. she really like she, she figured out the whole real thing, quick, yeah. so it never feels like that she is being victimized. And like, like it's it's gross, but it doesn't I mean, there feel is a whole like come on, Miss Daisy scene where she's like trying to hoof it, not knowing. But the sex is I think unlawful. she's very quick on the uptake, and yeah. that you don't feel like she's ever really, really, really taken aback. Except a for the one thing you find out way later in the book, which we will get. Yes. So, so yeah. Yeah, she does know because the juke keeps calling every so often. Like, she moved, they go into a hotel. Yeah. Because he's like, she's like, guess what? No. No, asshole. We're not staying in the same house together. So they go to a hotel and the Duke calls her and he's like, so, uh, I'm not sure that you should be, like, hanging around with this dude and all. So, in other words, the Duke has somebody watching her. And right. she's upset about that. She should be yeah. fucking upset about that. So she's yeah. looking everywhere. And for, she like, keeps and this one guy, she keeps seeing this one older man. It's just like, it's this guy. That's later on, though, when they yeah. go. But no, she does, like, she keeps seeing him around. Yeah. So, but it builds to a thing. Um, so, you know, he's taking her to do her quote unquote research. Mm-hmm. And I mean, they, do, they go to state libraries, they go to university libraries. It's just that, like, when he asks, like, how did it go, what she says doesn't make any sense. Essentially, she, it almost sounds like she's like corroborating what she's got from other sources, but like she I should know. be. I mean, she's looking at primary sources. She's looking at this diary of this woman that she's writing this this thing on. This is so like dotted. Like it the, basically, it it's it, it's there just to be there. Yeah. Because what it is is about having these two be in each other's yeah. like you know. Out. I mean, I like that somebody's doing library research at archives. That's cool. I mean, obviously yes, but yeah, it's it's so inconsequential. No. So she just keeps continually thinking the worst of him because that is what he's presented to her so it kind of comes to a head where she meets this very 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 attractive young woman they have gone to dally's hometown yeah for reasons that don't make any sense just because they wanted to take us back to this town yeah from fancy fans and and then nothing else makes sense because everybody in this town would fucking know each other but, but anyway. they all live like they're going back and like yeah I, I feel like this is like that one australian book where he did where like time and time <laughs> and location and distance don't Exist because they're like going from Houston to Austin to like all these places. Yeah, San Antonio. Just, yeah, like we're, the, we're, we're ign- completely ignoring that Texas. It is Texas Enorm- is an enormous state. So they're in his hometown where they kind of end up being for the rest of the book, and they meet yeah. this super hot lady, and it, she's got a baby, and she keeps saying, "How could you do this? How could you do this? How could you abandon your responsibilities like this?" Mm-hmm. And then like nobody like explain because I mean, it, it, why, why would they explain to her like this is all just kind of happening around her while she sits there at the pool? And then okay, so she flies into a fucking rage because she can handle anything except for the fact that Kenny would be a deadbeat dad. Which, I mean, to be fair, what else has she been given? What it actually turns out that that was, she finds out. And, of course, he's really upset about this. Legitimately, yeah. which, I mean, he should be. But that, like, that's his half-brother because that woman, Shelby, is his dad's second wife. And his uh, his dad's second wife is Kenny's sister's uh, sorority sister. Yeah. So they're the same it's fucking Kenny's age. sister's 
ex BFF. And so, <laughs> and to- his sister is not forgiving this woman. I mean, would you fuck? I, the book is messy. It's messy as a capital <laughs> But M. then what she's so upset about, and this makes no human sense, is that I guess maybe she's still like really fucking hormonal after the birth of the- I mean, this baby is like a, what, a crawler? It's a crawler. Yeah. yeah. So, um, it, like the upset that, that, not because Kenny hasn't agreed, like his father dies an untimely death, and they all die in a fucking plane crash to take care of this baby. No, but because Kenny can't settle the fuck down. And so Kenny won't be a good dad <laughs> if he has to take a like what <laughs> the fuck this woman had this tearful screaming conversation with him about this this is nonsense this book is so weird and then you meet his sister who is her name is Tori and she's amazing and I love her but she, so Tori is like the perfect blonde she wears a banana clip in her blonde hair okay will that explain Tori to you uh, this is this is not feeling 1999 we no. were not wearing banana clips in 1999 no. Tori like has been married she's in her she's been married twice she's in her early 20s she's been married twice she's you know divorced she is crazy as hell and I love her she has an emu farm yeah, but she can't um, face the idea of slaughtering an emu. I think emu. she just wanted emu. She didn't realize what an emu farm was. So the emu, keep, they keep fucking, of course. <laughs> so and they keep having more emus. But she doesn't know what to do about it because she's not going to eat the emus. She's named them all. Yeah. And they're all named like people names. It's like, that's Michael. <laughs> that's that's. And then she just looks at their eggs like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. And so her, her dad pays all of her emu farm bills. And her dad has said that he's going to cut her off from the emu farm, that the emus are all all gonna die unless she marries his business like you know not partner but someone else in business the scion of the other computer company which is weirdly also located in ynet texas it's a, the wildest thing it's but <laughs> so like then you realize that oh francesca put these people together because they were both in the unlikely condition of being marriage blackmailed for money <laughs> it's crazy and so it's the wildest thing so yeah so you have oh we forgot to tell the roofy thing oh that comes like yeah like, no, that's very early but you, it comes to a head where she finally figures it out at the end yeah well because she's a dumbass on that I guess she's never had a tattoo. But so what she she demands that Kenny take her to a tattoo parlor. This is before they get to want it. Um, and uh, and he's like, uh, you sure? And he's like, they're kind of dicking her along. But they um, they're at a Mexican restaurant, and he keeps plying her with margaritas. And she's obviously can Ma- Ma- margarita. Are you? Did you watch the? Uh, did you you GBBBO? Did you watch the Great British Bake Off? I Mexican did. Guacamole. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Carol, margarita. I promise you, I will not be peeling my avocados. <laughs> oh my god, y'all. My friend, I have some British friends that are like just so wound up about it. It's amazing. <laughs> I'm like, look, you have to understand, like the you know, like the second largest ethnic group in the United States are Hispanic people. It is we all know this. I was like, you guys get to just fuck off to wait, no, you guys get to fuck off to Italy, you get to fuck off to France, you get to do a oh, thing. Yeah, yeah. This is the this one is thing that we can do better is pronounced tortilla. Well, I was just going to say, I thought you were going to be like, oh, well, you know, I don't expect them to know it as well as we do. Because, no. Like, but no, I, I've never been to Thailand, but I wouldn't. What the but fuck? also, like, they get the vacation in Spain enough. Like, I, like, I, know, I know that, like, Spanish, Spanish has, like, that yeah, lisp, it, but has that lisp to it. But, like, come on. Try. <laughs> like, Fucking try. Although, on the other hand, I mean, imagine you had been a baker and you'd worked your way up from nothing. <laughs> and you have a great life story. And you're ready to be on a baking competition. And they're like, here, make a fucking taco. And then they dick them over with the tacos by not even giving them a press, like, to make the tortillas. Oh, they didn't? No. On well, the... they give them two books because that's how I did it before I had a press. Well, they, <laughs> with the tortillas, they just give them a pie plate. And, like, so you're just watching them, like, oh, my God. Just shimmy the well, pie plate. I mean, plate a true abuelita can do it with her two Oh, I mean, uh, yeah, but, like, I've has got an abuelita on the show. Like. <laughs> anyway, anyway so that happened. And she had a very, margarita. We're very disappointed in you, our British readers, for letting that happen. Happen. No, I I love it because I love it when you guys get to have egg on your face because you'd love to point it out with us. Huevos, huevos, <laughs> huevos right on your like. Um, I forget how you say face in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> like a uh, facio. <laughs> it's so great. Not that. Oh, <laughs> so anyway, yeah, like uh, he could have just given her more fucking margaritas, and that would have shut her. I up. mean, that bitch is like five foot two and weighs like ninety pounds. She's not a drinker. She's maybe had like a glass of sherry at like, yeah, like. Cream tea, whatever the hell. I don't know. I know Britain. I've been to Britain 
and Mexico, but I feel like I know Mexico better. <laughs> well, I wonder why. They're our neighbors. <laughs> and like, basically, when you're in the, the grocery store and everywhere else, you hear Spanish by osmosis. Yeah, we absolutely. all know it by osmosis, at least a little bit. Yeah. Even the most hillbilly motherfucker you've ever met probably knows at least one Hispanic Actually, person. the most hillbilly motherfuckers you know know more Hispanic people. <laughs> exactly. Because that's, you know, yes. uh, that's where migrant farm workers exactly. actually live and work. So Yeah, so uh, instead of doing that, he um, he roofies her and she wakes up and she's confused she thinks she just got really fucking drunk but she's got a tattoo of the texas flag and his name under it on her arm the worst a like, huge one like right there on the bicep and you know like if you're gonna do that you gotta like either sleeve it up or like like have an incre- i don't know i don't know yeah, like either that or you're gonna look like the lady that you just saw buying cigarettes at the gas station yes right? that's exactly what she has is the this but thing. it does not occur to her that it does not hurt. No. It's not bleeding. Well, not why I understand she that? doesn't know anything yeah. about tattoos. <laughs> and in 1999, actually in 1999, I was two years ago from getting my first tattoo, which is... Two years ago from getting your first tattoo. Two years before I got my first tattoo. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Yeah, two well, years ago for getting... Well, no, that actually does scan. Two years okay. ago from when I got my first tattoo. Um, and it is a um, it is a tribal tramp stamp. You know, you got to do what you got to do. But, yeah, it's it's like right there on her bicep. Like, and, But, I mean, she's so freaked out about it the whole time. It has never occurred to her, though, that anything about it is not like having a tattoo. She asks a million fucking questions about every goddamn thing else. But, like, yeah. not this. But, anyway. Like, this is coming off in the wash. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, we she starts to kind of, like, relax. Well, that and also gets to know her and... His sister become friends. She starts going through, like, going to town because we're in Wynette. Hey, remember Wynette? There's that fucking honky-tonk yeah. where Francesca and Dally punched each other in the face. Well, don't worry. Other people have a fucking <laughs> parking lot fight. And then the fun thing that we do have is, you know, while um, Emma is hanging out at the same honky-tonk, there is a much younger little 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 cool drink of water that she meets who is Teddy. And she's like, Hey, Hey, I got this V card business. And down and um, Kenny's like, he kind of pulls her collar back. And he's like, Nope. And she's like, but he's, but he's, and she's like, you like Francesca? She's like, Oh yes, I love her. And she's just like, that's his, that's her kid. So we have Teddy from our first book, all grown up. I mean, not grown up. He's it's 21. Obvious that the next book is going to be. Teddy. So like a lot of shit happens from this book, even though nothing happens, they just go to the Walmart and then they go to the libraries and then they go to the pool and then they have fights. But it seems like all these things happen. Um, the sum total of it is that they want a fucking bank. They want to bang real fucking bad. But also, <laughs> like, they're having this thing about her and her wanting to do this reputational thing. And also, he and his fucking pride. And he, she thinks, of course, that he's not really interested in her little buttoned-up schoolmistress business and, you know, all this stuff. All, all your normal, what you expect, the, the people's emotional yeah. problems to be in romances. You also definitely find out that, like, there's a lot of family trauma here that his uh, now-dead mother um, was had these two kids, and he was her golden boy, which was bad for him because he was a little fucking shit. And Tori was, like, the also-ran second thing. So for the dad, who was always working, Tori was the golden girl, and fuck you, Kenny. So now mom's dead, and meanwhile, dad has remarried his daughter's uh, sorority sister. Yeah. By the way, it's bad etiquette when you are the maid of honor at a wedding to fuck the father of the bride. It's true. Yeah, I don't recommend it. Yeah, it's in the... <laughs> it's in the handbook. It is in the handbook. So, like Sarah said, there is a lot that happens. Essentially, nothing happens. This book is one of those that you unpack more in the question portion. But, like she said, it's a family that is not great, but you have a father who's obviously trying to make amends. But you have Kenny, who also had a father who was a perfectionist and a little bit overbearing and was always, you can do better, you can be better, why are you like this? And it comes to a head in a couple of different ways. One is that Kenny and Emma take... Shelby, like they take the nephew. It's Peter, I think. Pete, yeah, they take you know his. Who little... he loves. He is a great uncle. Yeah, he loves his little brother. Actually, yeah, little yeah. brother. He loves his little brother. So he and Emma take him to like the little local petting zoo, and there's a baby race, mm-hmm. and 
you know, one of those stupid things where they put babies in a thing. And, and it's like, funny because they're yeah. terrible at it. The whole point is you're supposed <laughs> yeah. to be bad at it. But, like, yes. Kenny gets in his own head and he's like, yeah, like, not yelling, but he's yelling at Petey, like, come on, come on, come on. And, and then he, oh, you're supposed to encourage the baby, right? Right. But, but he's not like, you little motherfucker. No, he's you're never going to amount to anything. He gets really intense about <laughs> yeah. it. And he realizes it. And then Kenny just grabs the baby and is like, I'll be back. And like, and he, he just runs. He just no He out. leaves Emma at the zoo, but hilariously with his he throws a credit card at her and like buy yourself some and then runs away and then teddy's the, like teddy shows up because it's wana at texas which somehow has a zoo but like it's like it's like a fair for it's a, like the county fair so teddy picks her up and like she's not stranded at the zoo her and teddy go to the same fucking roadhouse like mm-hmm. the, the honky tonk and they buy everybody yeah like food on on kenny oh we should say she's terrified of driving she has her own family trauma because like yeah. um i guess her parents like the the statue fell on the car while it was driving no, the statue <laughs> fell on her mom but her dad actually died yeah. in a car cr- you know how many of these women have had their parents die oh in a God, car, car crash with like them crash. jesus it's all the time but um you know kenny takes Petey to this little like spot this tree spot um and he's, you know, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Like, he has this, like, Kenny, once you get past the initial asshole stage of him that, you know, he had, it, like, that he portrays himself to be, he kind of puts on this front of being this, like, deadbeat dude. He's actually got a, a, quite a bit of emotional intelligence, you know, minus roofing somebody to put a fucking fake tattoo on He them. was trying to take care of her. It's just that his idea was not the best yeah. idea. So, um, you know, we have that. And then... They finally do bang it out. They do bang it out. And it's good. You it know, is I have good. To say. But the thing is, like, the Duke keeps calling. The Duke the, is the, not. The Duke is calling with weirdly. Like, very specific. He just knows. Very like, specific information, but not complete information. Like, she has this thing where she sees the guy she thinks is following her in the Rite Aid. So she goes like a mad woman through the Rite Aid. Buying hemorrhoid cream, buying what vaginal moisturizer was the thing that Kenny made fun of her for, buying a tabloid, buying like just like eight to eight thousand things of condoms, buying like every embarrassing thing. So it's just one aisle, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's the it's the no tell aisle. The no tell aisle, yeah. But like um and, and all the Duke hears about is the tabloid. Yeah, it's very strange. Yeah. Well it so, ends up you know. like everything comes to a head. The the Duke shows up and he's like, You've had enough of this nonsense. There's a confrontation at the same fucking roadhouse that mm-hmm. Franny and Dally got in a fight in. Turns and, out, by the way, he's a major uh, shareholder in one of these same two goddamn tech firms. Oh, my God. It's crazy. So Shelby is beside herself because there's, like, English royalty is what she sees it as. But they all go to this roadhouse. It comes to a head, and Emma's like, I don't want you. I've been screwing this guy. He calls her a slut. Kenny, and, like, he says really ugly things to her. Mm-hmm. Kenny rightfully punches the guy in the face. And then, lo and behold, the guy that, you know. The journalist shows up. Oh, my God. It's so ridiculous. Well, no, actually, the Duke slaps her. But, oh, yes. Yeah, she gets. But, the, like, the guy just completely missed that on the footage. And it only gets Kenny beating up this much older man. It looks terrible. Yeah. And so it just keeps coming. And so it kind of comes to this big head where Dally and Francesca come to town. And no, before that, this is crazy. She's going back to England because, frankly, oh, she God, they got married. Yeah, I know. She's got non-refundable plane tickets. And he shows up sweaty at the jetway. And the stewardess, sorry, I'm sorry. Actually, gate agent. No, I was going to say flight attendant. This is a gate agent. Yeah. He's like, man, like, this is back when, young people, you used to be able to go to the go. gate. So yeah. if you want to have a grand gesture, you had to run. All yeah, right. You, just you couldn't just do it a baggage claim or at the cell phone lot, whatever. You it was cheaper, to. though, because people now have to, like, buy the ticket to the. Oh, to yeah. The can you imagine? You had to really care about something. Yeah. But, like, the lady is like, ma'am, we're closing this. And he's like, she's like, hold on, hold on. Ma'am. And then eventually she's like, ma'am, you are going to have to figure this out on your own time. And they close the case. Yeah. And, and he flies her to Vegas and they get married. But it's sad. It's awful. Like, it's not triumphant. It's awful. And she is like, well, you're just doing this to get back on the PGA tour. You know, it's like we do a lot of this like back and forth. And thing. she had confessed her love to him, but he didn't reciprocate. Yeah. And so she thinks that, oh, the whole thing is just you feel just shitty about this. It's and gross. so Dally and Francesca come to town and Dally is like, go get it. I'll meet you on the course playing golf. And it is the most high fucking stakes, sweaty it's anxiety producing because you don't really know what Dally's doing, but you know that Kenny is just his eyeballs are sweating blood. It is he is so upset and tense 
And I guess he figures if he can't play golf, he can't do anything. All this business. And they get to the last hole. And he's not playing well anyway. But then they're like, let's. And the ladies show up in a golf court. Francesca and Emma show up. A golf golf. cart? Like, you are GBBO in it hard. You're like, a golf court. A golf Wait, court. The court the go- of golf. The court of golf is here with Lady Emma presiding. <laughs> like, no. I don't know, man. I've had a tough week. I'm tired. I know. I know. I'm tired. T-A-H-R-E-D. <laughs> tired. But, yeah. So, and, like, Dolly's like, let's let the ladies finish up the putts. And neither one of them. Not, like, and also, I was like, I feel like Emma from St. Gert's would be yeah. better at golf. I know. Was- She's like, I played miniature golf once. Like, I thought she was actually going to bust out with knowing how to play golf. I me too. Maybe the aristocracy doesn't play golf like the aristocracy that we got does. I don't know, man. Like, they got the Lynx course. Dude, in that whole when I was in Africa, I made this, like, very obnoxious British man turn a color because I told him that we watched the Queen of England like a Kardashian. <laughs> we just want to see what she wears. We she's not, like, relevant to our lives or anything. But we just kind of, like, you know, we like, she's an entertaining thing that we watch. And he, We like to look at her and say, we beat you. Yeah, we do. He went, like, first he went white, and then he went red, and then he made a noise. I think that it's funny because I do think that the monarchy is the one thing that, honestly, like, it doesn't matter your political affiliation. We all, like, even as blue as I am or whatever, I still look at it and I'm like, we beat you. It's red. You know, like, I get a little redneck about it. I like like to look at their hats, though. I do like their hats. I like a wedding where I can look at everybody's outfits. That's what I enjoy about them. I mean, the same thing I, I do at like a Kardashian. A, I like a, a funeral like, what's when Mitch one of them. Wearing? I like a funeral when one of them fucking dies. I, I did miss all of that, thankfully, by being, and interestingly, in a ex colony. Oh, uh, you were. Yeah, we didn't have TV. It's great. It was amazing, <laughs> actually. It's fantastic. All the rest of the world had so, to watch it. Yes. The, but, yeah, so. It's very fraught. This. Yeah. It's so, so fucking tense. And, like, he's all like, okay, so what do you have to do? You hold the thing. He's, he's screener like he did Petey. And yeah. then he catches himself and he sees but she gets upset yeah but her... she yeah and, and she's gonna do it too she's not like look this is obviously not cool what you're doing you can meet me back at the fucking clubhouse no 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 she's like no i'll make the putt i'm not... and then i'll never see you again but then he also like he does like the thing is, is he's like fuck this like this yeah. is not worth like, like her being i really upset. upset her yeah and he just like takes her and they leave yeah well because dally said and then dally like and dally like what we have he learned reverses is that, it yeah is that dally is a shit heel and that this is like dally's whole point he's like mm-hmm. but why did you have to emotionally torture these people to do yeah this? but he told him i'll let you back on the tour if your girl makes the putt yeah and in fact if his if she had made the putt then he would have been off the tour that's pretty fucking shitty i don't know dally what we've learned i mean really are millionaires but But dally is a piece of shit Mm -hmm. so (laughs) it ends up like they have one big final confrontation yeah like she still doesn't believe it like his his excuse is to just throw her in a pool and they make out and then we find out everybody's pregnant and everybody's happy yes we should say we forgot to say about so tori and dexter we will we will cover them in question Oh, okay because like we do need to talk about how hot that was yes okay all right question time and this is where we'll cover it. So big dick energy or big dick Speaking energy. Speaking of big dick. So, yeah. So we have Kenny, which we'll get to in a second. But the biggest dick energy in both. I love being able to actually use this in the like in literal big dick energy sense is a guy named Dexter. So we told you about the scion that the dad wanted Tori to marry. It's this uptight little dude. He's not little. This uptight dude named Dexter. <laughs> yeah, he's not little. <laughs> that Tori has just written off as being a nerd. And he's yeah. very, very logical. He's very, you know, buttoned down kind of dude. My favorite thing. I love a starchy guy and a crazy bitch. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> and they have, like, a really flirty... They have the best... Like, their sex scene is so hot. At first, she was like, no, absolutely not. Yeah. No, get the fuck away from me. But she says one time, she's like, oh, yeah, what would you even do with me? And he's like, well, I guess I would spank you, like, over up my ass. Like, with your ass in the air and, like, you know, your panties down, that's what I would do. Yeah. And then she's like, what? <laughs> and it happens. And then he's basically like, I've got to make sure you are prepared enough because my dick is big. And she's mm-hmm. like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then he, like, whips it out and she's like, oh. oh. <laughs> so I mean like they they call it I guess percussive maintenance where you just like smack your hand against something that's not working. So that fixes her fertility. Yes, issues. he does his giant dip. But Which they do make I a like don't I, believe is how it works. I know, but like I think what they, they do allude to like and this is a thing, like she's so in her own head and stressed about it that like I will give it this as somebody who has had fertility issues, being the person that can, you know, 
say like it didn't but what I, what i liked that they gave a loot like kind of discussed is that she's so in her head about it and so stressed out about it that that is one of the things like her body's kind of reacting to. And he does before they do end up getting pregnant, tell her, I don't care. Like if we adopt, we'll adopt a baby. I don't, I don't give a shit. Yeah. And so I that kind of takes yeah. that so pressure okay. off of her. Like I liked that, that like, I think like that was kind of the, the idea is that she was so stressed about care, you know, doing this, that when he tells her this, that he would be like, that he would love her no matter what and wants to be with her and would be willing to have a child, like, you know, via adoption that like her body just sort of like relaxed a little bit, which is a thing that does happen. It but, does. but, and I do, I, I would have liked it if she had adopted a kid, but I also yes. understand this is the nineties and like that doesn't happen. I would, just way, I would way prefer if, if, if it had been, I, I don't like a book where somebody has fertility problems and then at the end of it they have a baby. I don't. Well, no, I like mean, it. I you know, obviously, I don't love it. Yeah, yeah but I th I did like that she. It was I thought it was like how you know she was just being a major asshole about <laughs> it, like making everybody deal with her pregnant ass. <laughs> I love that. But I do think that also like realistically if it had been that hard for her to conceive she would have been a fucking nervous wreck for nine months. Oh god no. But... She would have been an asshole <laughs> yeah. she would have been like yeah. she would have told anybody until like the baby was actually exactly. coming out of her. But yeah. he, he was great. And insofar as Kenny I liked there were elements of Kenny I liked. I was okay I was pro Kenny by the end of it yeah. but it was a hard sell in the beginning dude. Yeah. He's I had a hard time getting finished. It started with his book because this guy was such an asshole. But it is like interesting like after you know after Emma gets thrown in the pool she gives him the business and she gives the family the business of like he's done acting like mm -hmm. some kind of like douchebag. Yeah. I don't want to hear another fucking story about the shitty things he did when he was a kid. Because yeah. yes, he did those shitty but things. But he was a kid. However, he is a grown man now and I refuse to hear it again. Yeah, and like his brain like stop, he was a kid. His brain wasn't he mm -hmm. wasn't done cooking. And I liked that. So I guess that does lead into like would you talk shit with her about the heroin? She's great. Oh yeah, she's that great. Is, Susan Elizabeth Phil Phillips writes really good female characters. Yeah. Male characters, too. I yeah, yeah, all yeah, of her yeah. characters are really kind of, like, fun, and even in their foibles and flaws, like, they feel the flaws are there for a purpose and not just to be a flaw. And they feel real. Yeah. They feel, and I, I mean, we talked about this before, but I really like that she's not a virgin because she's uptight or because no. she has some kind of mental like block or because of anything like that. She's a virgin because she's busy. It's, and it's hard to find a dude, okay? She's gonna be, yeah, it's like if you're dirt. a tough, like, <laughs> if you're a tough bitch who. You know, yeah, she had like a, a guy that she was like super into and was like, and he ended up like, you know, be, being with somebody else. But he was actually, okay, so it was uh, it was a colleague and she finally came out and she's like, um, so I think I've felt some feelings for you. And he was like, oh, um, he said something that was like nice. But it was not rude. Okay. Yeah. It was not mean or anything. And then like she said, well, then I saw him with a graduate assistant. Well, I mean, he wasn't like an asshole to her. No. He was just like, oh, yeah, I, you're... I think he actually said something that would make me want to die. Like, you're so brave. <laughs> yeah. It was so, yeah. She she felt like she could be friends. Like, and I think that's what, again, SCP does, is she writes women that you'd want to be friends with. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, certainly the best example, you should go back and listen to our Fancy Fans episode, because Francesca was a goddamn see you next Tuesday. Yes, and then her. she ends but up by the great. end of it, holy shit, I would have walked through fire I for know. Francesca. And then, yeah, like, it was, yeah, she writes really good, and even... Even these characters like Tori, who's prickly and, you know, supposed to be, like, tall and beautiful and wonderful. Like, you see her, the things that she, like, she takes these people who, I think what she does really well is she writes these kind of Jackie Collins books. But mm -hmm. then what she does is she really takes, like, where you, you see Jackie Collins write this surface character, like, Lucky mm -hmm. Santiago. But, like. Ja you know, Susan Elizabeth Phillips really gives them depth and like, you know why they are the way that they are. And they, you, you see, know what like, she does? 
She looks at a sack full of assholes and she asks herself, what if these people were all on the inside good people? Why would they be doing this? Why would they be acting like this? What would make them act like this? And how would you find out that they were not like that? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like that's, I, I, I kind of, yeah, I love her. It it makes her like, I've read, uh, I have read like several of hers and there's been ones that are like legit, like where you're like, what the fuck am I reading? Why am I reading this? (laughs) But like at the end of it, she's able to take this whole shit show and make it work. Mm -hmm. And I think it leads to our question of back down to bitch. And I think that's why it works so well. There's always really good female characters in this. Like there's real relationships between a lot of different women. There's such a great moment. Like, (laughs) so... Emma and Tori become fast friends. And again, Emma is grasping at straws to try to get this Duke off of her. And she's like, I'm in love with and she points Tori and then kisses Tori. And Tori just like, takes it like totally into it. Like takes it like a champ. She takes it in stride. Yes, and like, we're lesbian. <laughs> she's like, we're lesbian. Right. Like, and then Tori like is classic little sister. And did we ever say? Did we ever say who the spy was? Oh, I think we We didn't say who the spy was. Going back to Big Dick Energy. Oh, yeah. This is a major thing, okay? It was Kenny. It was Kenny. The whole time. But he was like, he is his whole, oh, I was just giving, yeah, him enough to. He didn't want somebody else doing it. Uh, Like, well, then why didn't you give him enough to actually, like, succeed in what she was trying to do? I guess it was so weird. Like, honestly, that didn't fit. It did. It didn't fit. This and she book, wasn't mad enough about it because she had the same level of mad about book everything. Narratively, d- is like, yeah. But There's like, like the character, black moments. Yeah, the ter- the characters make up enough for it. But like, yeah. So when she kisses Tori, Tori's just like, "We are lesbians," and you know. But then Tori's also like, "Hey, you ladies, a good kisser." Like totally yeah. roasting her brother for it. But then you also have, in addition to that, you have Shelby, who's the one that at first you're like going to throw away because you assume she's the one married to this much older man. But she ends up being great. Yeah, too. she's fine. She takes over the um. She okay. Well, at the end of it, they save the girls' school by um actually a coalition of parents and community mm-hmm. members. But then it turns out that Shelby gave a ton of money. <laughs> <laughs> and Shelby, because Shelby's obsessed with British gold, like yeah. she's, like, she's an Anglophile, and she becomes like the like de facto head of the like benefactor of yeah, the school, it's and it's great. And, and like, what I think is interesting is that you never see Shelby and Tori make up. Tori is a upset because Shelby, I don't know, married your dad, and then but had B, a kid. had a kid, and yeah. so that's I mean, just immediately had a kid, and so you know how I mean, yeah. how hard that is, and also I mean, when your sorority sister marries your dad, that's a lot to fucking get over, all right? But it's like, a lot to unpack, and I mean, it really took you know, Dex spanking her and then giving her that big fucking dick. yeah, that, it reset the whole thing, it hit that big old reset, but evidently your power on off switch is in your cervix. It is, yeah. Like, I mean, but you know what, Dex didn't at least like. In that one book we read where he had to go to like her special like behind oh! cervix like what even was that there was like the <laughs> the, 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 the the Dex is just right like it, just, <laughs> it knows where the reset button is it doesn't have to go back behind and unplug things like it just resets <laughs> oh wait I'll, I'll think in the middle of the night tonight what book that was because that book was fucked up oh my god it was so great like, oh my god there was a popping sound oh. if I recall if it pops it doesn't need the hand felt that was the one that I made you read. Yes. The, that was the ladies' tutor that I was yeah. th- that was so hot because that's about the same time as this. That's when I read it in college. Yeah. yeah, it made that like like a champagne cork. And then she did the champagne douche after that to not get pregnant. So, yeah. I mean, I, I would rather get in Kenny's hot tub. <laughs> I'd rather get in Kenny's hot dog. I'd rather have to deal with Dexter. Than oh, that. my God. Yes. Anyway, so all that happened. Yeah. When it comes to consent, is this book more Robin Thicke or Marvin Gaye? Well, we have the really gross roofing. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't. I think he does actually undress her, but just like to keep her like not not in a gross way. No, I don't. Yeah. I don't think he ever sees her day. Like he might have taken her bra off. I don't know. I think he did. But yeah, they're they're actual. Sex. He does walk into her, her room when she's showering that one time. Oh, it's. Yeah, it's very, like, again, this book tonally is very strange. But the actual sex is extremely consensual. Yes. By which I mean, like, you know, she is down to fuck. <laughs> she is in it. And by the time it comes down to it, she is down to it. Okay. How badly are you judging your mom off for reading this book? I don't know if she would have read it, but I would have loved it. Yeah, no, this was fine. It felt very soap opera. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Just like, meh, meh. It felt like the summer, like, the summer sweep series of a good soap Yeah, opera. right. Yeah, everybody 
just hollering and throwing wine glasses. Yeah, everybody's hollering. They're throwing wine glasses. They're throwing people in the pool. There's emus named Michael walking around. Yeah. Like, it's my kind of jam. With Scarlett Johansson being in the movie, this is a little interesting. Okay, so this is 99. And the one thing that makes like, oh, okay, maybe this was 99. So there's a housekeeper <laughs> named Patrick who is a gay man and an out gay man in Wynette, Texas. And he is clearly unrequitedly in love with Kenny. I guess Kenny saved him. Yeah, uh, like 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 from a gay bashing, like like a, a, a hate crime, a hate crime. Yeah, and the, so the thing is, I mean, I don't like that. Obviously, Patrick is this neutered person who makes a lot of crude. I kind of wish that like Patrick had just had a spouse. Yeah, and they were just like yeah, part of the crew. They had like a cottage, like Patrick yeah. and Nick or whoever yeah. living there, and Nick does the grounds, and Patrick yeah. does the house. I would have liked that much better because Patrick is like this sort of neutered, pine He's very kind of yeah, like caricature. But it's actually. Kind of great because he also taught Tori photography. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, he's a very positive character. I, I wish that, like, you know, he were not this sort of... Right. You know... No, for sure. On no. a, almost mammy character, you know. It's kind but of just... he's there. And uh, there is that thing where... Um, where where Lady Emma throws her arms around Tor- uh, like Tori and like, I'm a lesbian! And it's... <laughs> but I love that Tori's like, yep, yep. We're lesbians. And I mean, like, it was it was treated in the, the appropriate way. Yeah. In which is like, we're not lesbians. But there's, you know, like, obviously, it's not, like, it would not be wrong if we were lesbians. Yeah. Nobody's yeah. upset about it. Nobody's yeah. upset about it. Except for the Duke. Then, but then you're meant to hate the Duke yeah. even more because he's exactly. not cool He's a homophobe. Lesbian. Yeah. Yeah. So, obviously, it's not okay to be a homophobe in this book, which, which I appreciate. Yeah, I did. Everybody is white. Yes. Uh, of course, it takes place. And again, we're in Texas. Mm-hmm. So if we go back to our great British bake-off, like rants. Like, yeah, where the hell how are, are they the... learning how to say tortilla and guacamole? Maybe what? they don't. Maybe maybe these people are all like tortilla they're all throughout the book. They're just their avocado. Yeah, yeah. They're peeling like a potato. You, you just, you're assuming because, they, you know, she didn't tell you otherwise. You're not leaving the house looking like that. Ah, bitch. Well, you really get more than that. Like, you get all of Lady Emma's hats. Like, she wears these crazy hats. Like, when you first meet her, she's got on, like, this straw hat with cherries hanging off of it. Yeah, but she wears these. Okay, let me let me tell you one of her outfits. And this is extremely typical for her outfits. She sure wasn't dressed for sex. Not that there was anything wrong with her clothes. She wore a nice pair of beige slacks with a waist-length yellow cotton sweater that had a couple pearl buttons at the neck and a little band of crocheted lace at the bottom. The outfit was fresh and crisp looking, and it fit her well without being revealing. But he sort of missed the flowers. I would die if a man saw me wear that, and I dress like a hobbit. My mom would have put me in that outfit. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my mom would have put me in that outfit. And those would have been pleated slacks. She was always, like, in a floral skirt long, like a T-length skirt and, like, a little sweater. I feel like hat. it wasn't T-length. I feel like it was the wrong length. I feel like it was, like, that high school principal length. No, that's that awful, like, oh, T-length's the worst. No, T-length is, like, there. Oh, it's, it's the worst. Cute. It's the worst. I like T-length. I used to like T-length before I got... I don't know. Fat and androgynous. I hate you. Yeah, Never like this. Oh, But yeah, she was always in like these weird little, weird little prim outfits that were sort of off. Like, <laughs> Yeah. And he thinks they're hot, I guess, because like they got that mouth in them. She's got that mouth. So. But Tori had some outfits, too. Oh, Tori. Was- Banana clips and, and like, almost like, see, this is why this is not, maybe, I don't know. I'll, we'll have to ask correspondent Zach from the field if maybe in the 90s if texas was really the 80s because could be could be because tori was dressed like a hot aerobics girl i feel like she might have writ- wrote this and then just sat on it she might have i mean you know good insurance policy right Having oh. that. and then she put tiger woods name in it she's like good good we enough got it. we got it send tweet <laughs> you know? um would your 12 year old self have dog eared any page okay i'll go i'm going <laughs> to say that right now probably the hottest it, it, top five in these books that we have read is not, but I don't care about Kenny and Emma. It's fine. The hot, like top five moment, hot moments of all the books that we have read on this podcast is Tori and, and Dexter. It was really hot. It was so, like, basically she is mouthing off to him and he's like, well, and he's, he's like basically very matter of fact about it. 
asking for consent. He's like, I'm going to spank you now. And she's like, do it, do it, do it, do it. You're not. And then he do does it. it like not sexy. He does it like. Well, he does it. And she's like, oh, shit. ow. And she, but she is into it. Ooh. And like, it is the hottest thing. It is so hot. It, this book it is, is fucking. But I was like, shit, why is this book not about them? Why are we not learning more about his giant dick? Like, I have to say, though, that this book, you can, this is where you can tell it's 1999 because the men in this go downtown like they yes. are paid to do it 40 so hours a week. Benefits, right. PTO. <laughs> they got like an insurance plan. There's they a got union. a stock share. There's, yes. a, there's Teamsters. There, yes. There's downtown Teamsters. They're wearing t-shirts. <laughs> They're like the union <laughs> way of life. But the union way well, of life is just so like amazing. a bulldog eating a bowl full of oatmeal. Oh, my God. It's so good. <laughs> So good. I was so into it. So, into you know, once Lady Emma gets her engine running, she will suck your dick in the front seat of a car. It's like behind a tree. All right. She has no problem with that business. This book is horny and shit. As long as you then go down on her and then for she's the going union to way of life. To you and tell you exactly. But she is. Okay. Like, one thing I did not like. I will. But I also understand, like. I, I know. She's very much in her own head. But, okay. So they are. Finally getting it on, and you've been waiting for this for all these pages. And she's trying to be like, "Yes, take it off, suck my titties." And he's like, "Don't you dare tell me what to do." And I'm like, "What the fuck?" I feel like it wasn't. It went beyond that to where she's like, "After you do that, what I would like you to do is." No, I know, I know, like, I know. It was like that, and I, I mean, feel like I get that she liked him taking control. I feel and like all. it was a little bit of like a give and take. The way it was them. stated, though, I was like, "Oh my god!" Like it's normal to say. <clears throat> Right, but I get yeah. it. I, I, I'm saying like this 1999. Mm. It's you know, mm. he actually stopped once because <laughs> he she asked him to do things, and I do think okay, I get that the whole thing that he had with her is like you know you don't need to be such a school mom all the time, but in no, fact, obviously. a woman should feel like she can say They're here. No, yeah. obviously, but I do think, like, again, like, like for me, like I said, the hottest thing, like, like I said, these two, I didn't give a shit about. Oh, no, the no. The other no. two. I mean, they were, they, they were also the hot. They were fine. They were fine hot, you know? Yeah. Okay. So, what pairs nicely with a dumpster fire? I feel like we have to go with, like, another, like, Texas fucking beer or something, because they're Rome always Star, at the- Are we back on- Shinerbach? Is that what we're drinking? <laughs> well, I don't know. They're always at fucking... Yeah, we're drinking Margs that are spiked. Margs. Roofied spiked Margs. Um, a lot of gorditas. Um, <laughs> and then lastly, should a human being in the 21st century read this? Yes, actually. Yes. I, I, think, I, I like her a lot. I think I especially for a book that is from 1999. And feels like it's from 1989 yeah, in a lot the, of ways. Like, everybody in it has a lot of... EQ, like there's a lot of emotional intelligence. There's a lot of growing and learning. That's the like that is what you read a Susan Elizabeth Phillips book for is the nonsense and then also like to act you know, in so many of these books, basically what cures a guy of his assholery is like fucking. Mm -hmm. And this one is actually like doing a little bit of emotional work. And so Yeah, like confronting like why you feel this way. She she really does a lot, I think, in her own way. And a lot of it might be ham fisted, but there is a lot of like like mental health. Yeah work in it and yeah, i appreciate so you've experienced that. trauma and you think you uh, this guy kenny would say what no i grew up rich i had all this money you know i was a little shit yeah and then you find it like you, you had to convince a guy like that that he's yeah, experienced trauma, like, that his trauma is real he he recognizes and then his own father recognizes like no the person that was like your father figure wasn't me it was dally mm-hmm. um and I, I don't know i think she does a really good job at like Framing things in these kind of ridiculous ways, but then also taking moments. There have been moments in both of her books where I got a little bit emotional with Mm -hmm. them and got like really invested. And I think that that takes a lot of talent. And I think that especially when you can take things that seemingly, especially on paper and discussing them are hella toxic and hella gross but make it work to your favor. Mm-hmm. So I think that's kind of her talent. And I would suggest, yeah, I would totally say read her book. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I have enjoyed very much both of these. I know that I read four of her when I was young. I have no idea which ones they were. I read a crazy kind of one. I don't have to find it. That might have to be a later one about a like a poor little rich girl that ends up married to a guy and they're in the circus. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sure. And like, there's a tiger, and then he's also like, he he does stuff with like a a, a whip, 
And it, oh. it's all very, hey. but it's all very, fr- like, no, it's not, so, like, he oh. gets back, like, no, it's it's good, but it's, it's like, <laughs> the big emotional scene in that one is he's upset about something, and he's using his thing, and, like, actually, like, nicks her, and it becomes this whole thing, but it was, like, really, I remember that whole book. I remember that book, and I remember, like, him, the girl was a- attached to this tiger, and it was, like, him throwing down his whole, like, shit to save this tiger so she's a crazy writer but it works yeah honestly honest honest to god every time i read one of her books i hate these motherfuckers yes 100 pages <laughs> exactly you absolutely and by the end that. of it i would do you know bloody handed murder yeah it's so, yeah. yeah so this has been us reading susan elizabeth phillips's lady be good you can find us at bodice tipplers.com you can find us at twitter at b tipplers instagram bodice tipplers facebook bodice tipplers patreon patreon.com slash bodice tipplers like and subscribe wherever you get your podcast bodice tipplers is part of the frolic network Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts.